Hi everybody. The topic of the video that you're about to watch is called Vector Components and in it we're going to talk about the following topics. We're going to talk about what exactly vector components are and we're also going to talk about how to calculate them and at the end I'm going to leave you with a couple exercises that you can try on your own just to make sure you fully understand them. So first of all just think back to grade 11. In uh, grade 11 you learned that vectors were these line segments that had um, a magnitude and a direction. So for example, you might have a vector that looks something like this. Maybe it's a displacement vector, the symbol delta D. As an example, I'm going to use 850 meters, but that's not all there is to it. If you're uh, going to have a vector, you also have to have a direction. So I'm going to put in a north, and I'm going to put in the east axis, so this would be north, that would be east, like that. And if that was the case, then this vector would have a direction. Uh, if we specify, just for argument's sake, let's put 25 degrees in as this angle, then you'd be looking at east 25 degrees north, or as the uh, grade 12 textbook that we're using at the moment would write it, they would actually call this 25 degrees north of east. Okay, so those are equivalent. Now this is the grade 11 way of writing these uh, vectors. However, there's a new way called vector components, which as you're going to see throughout the course is much easier to use when you're dealing with vectors, and that's what I want to teach you today. So the first thing you got to do is realize that when you're thinking of these vector components, you're going to start thinking of north the same way you think of the positive y-axis in math class. And east is going to be like the positive x-axis. And what you're also going to do is start thinking about the tip of the vector as being a point in space with coordinates x, comma, y. Of course, the tail of the vector sits at the origin. So basically what this boils down to is just trying to figure out what are x and y? The two components or the two parts of the vector. Now one thing that's important to note is that um, because north and east meet at a right angle, we're very lucky. We're dealing with a right angle triangle here. Um, as you can see, the hypotenuse is actually the magnitude of the vector and the eastness or the, uh, d the distance that this goes in the x direction, this is what we call the x component and the y-ness or the vertical direction however you want to call it this is the y component so thinking about the rules that we have for right angle triangles what do we know well we know we can use Pythagorean theorem and we also know that we can use the trig ratios And these are your standard so, ka, and toa. So we're going to use these two ideas to figure out what are x and y. And that's really all there is to it. That's going to be our x and y components. <clears throat> so first of all, let's deal with the x component. Uh, just to make this a bit easier, I'm going to use a different color for both components. So for the x component, that is this side of the triangle. This is the side adjacent to 25. So you've got a hypotenuse of 850. You want to know the adjacent. You've got an angle of 25. When you're dealing with the adjacent, you're going to use cosine. So cos 25 degrees equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Of course, the adjacent is my x component, and the hypotenuse is 850. And so solving for that, you'll get x equals 850 times cos 25 degrees. And if you work that out, I think it comes to 770.3 to one decimal place. Now I'm going to use a different color for the y component just so that you can keep everything straight. I don't know, let's pick, uh, I'm feeling green today, so I'm going to pick green there. And so the y component this is the side opposite the 25 degree angle, so that's asking you to use sine theta because sine theta is opposite 
over hypotenuse. And so the, hypot the opposite side, rather, is your y component. Your hypotenuse is 850. Let me slide that over there. And so what that's going to give you is y equals 850 sine 25 degrees. And my calculator tells me that this number is 359.2 to one decimal place. So now we know that in order to go 850 meters east 25 degrees north, you're actually doing two separate things. You're going a little bit up. Again, that's your y or your north component, I guess you could call it. And you're also going a little bit east. And that is what we call your x component, or maybe you'd call it your east component. Now what do we do in the end? Well, very simply, we put these together and we write as follows, delta d vector equals x comma y. So the x comes first, that's 770.3 comma 359.2. And I guess you could write m for meters. And this lets everybody know exactly the same information as what you learned in grade 11, just in a slightly different form. Okay? Now, suppose you didn't know the grade 11 form and you were given this form here, the component form, could you work backwards? Of course you could. You'd use the exact same techniques that we used. You'd go up here and take a look at what you know about trig ratios and Pythagorean theorem. You could take these two numbers, you could draw the triangle that they form, and you could work your way backward using trig ratios and Pythagorean theorem to the hypotenuse of 850 and the angle in here of 25 degrees. And that's really all there is to it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a couple of uh, questions that you can work on. One of them starting with grade 11 style vectors and having you calculate the components. And the other one going the reverse way. I'm going to give you the components and you're going to tell me the grade 11 style vector. So as a student exercise. Number one here, we're going to ask, calculate the displacement in component form given delta D equals, and uh, for this one I've worked out or prepared a question or an example for you, 100 meters and we're going to call this 40 degrees west of north. Okay, so just thinking about what this would look like, you're being given the following vector. Oops, this should actually extend over there. You're being given a vector this time. I've actually thrown you a little bit of a curve here because this time the vector is actually in this direction. Now, what's the little curve that I've thrown you? Well, this is your north, and this is east that we were dealing with before. This was positive y, and this is positive x. Well, this time I made the vector go into the positive y, but I also made it go into the negative x. In other words, the west quadrant at an angle of 40 degrees. And uh, maybe some of you who are mathematically inclined are starting to think, hmm, I wonder what that's going to do to the x component. If you guessed that the x component is going to be negative, you're correct. I'm going to give you the answer. Your job is to work it out and see that you actually get this number. But what I get is negative 64.3 comma 76.6 meters as the uh, as the displacement in component form. Once again, the x component here is negative because you can see the vector goes into the negative x region. Okay, so that's exercise number one. Exercise number two, given a displacement vector of, and let me see where I worked this one out, negative 3.2 comma negative 4.8 meters, 
determine delta D in magnitude slash direction format. In other words, using these components, figure out the magnitude and the direction and write it out. So here I'm not going to give you a diagram like I did up here. That's your job this time. But the answer, and you'll know you understand when you get this, is going to be delta D is 5.8 meters and the direction is 33.7 degrees west of south. Okay, so assuming I didn't make a mistake when I worked these out before I started this video, you should be fine, otherwise you're going to be running around in confusion and uh, I don't want that to be the case. But anyway, that's all there is to it. That is vector components and keep in mind these vectors could be any kind of vector could be a displacement vector, it could be a velocity vector, it could be an acceleration vector, it could be a force vector. Uh, as you're going to see throughout the course, we're going to use components for all these different types of vectors. And in a future video, we're going to see what we actually do with these components and why you should learn this new method. All right, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed. Hope that helped. Well, you probably didn't enjoy. Who enjoys physics? But uh, hopefully that helps you with your, um, your vectors. All right, thanks for listening and watching, and I'll see you in a future video. Bye.